For almost half a century, from the end of World War II until the fall of the Soviet Union, our world existed on the precipice of nuclear annihilation. The threat of an instant and irreversible descent into nuclear war hung constant over our heads. The pendulum of power sometimes swinging our way and sometimes swinging toward the Soviets. It was this race for superiority that led to the creation of this place, the most advanced nuclear anti-ballistic missile facility ever built. The Stanley Mickelson Safeguard Complex near Nakoma, North Dakota was far ahead of its time. Some would say too far, since questions about how effective this anti-ballistic missile defense would actually be contributed to its eventual shutdown. The facility shown here was the centerpiece of a collection of radar facilities and launch sites around northeastern North Dakota designed to detect and intercept incoming Soviet ICBMs. The site, built between 1970 and 1975, housed 30 Spartan and 70 Sprint missiles with nuclear warheads. The idea was to destroy incoming Soviet ICBMs before they could take out the United States missile silos near Grand Forks. Originally, there were to be three safeguard facilities, with the other two near Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri and Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana. The 1972 SALT-1 treaty changed things, however. The United States and the Soviet Union, under the terms of the treaty, were each allowed two anti-ballistic missile defense bases, one to protect the national capital and one to defend an ICBM installation. As a result, Whiteman was canceled prior to construction and Malmstrom was canceled with construction underway. Only the Nakoma ABM facility was completed. The Stanley Mickelson Safeguard Complex reached partial operational capability on the 1st of April, 1975. It received its full complement of warheads and became fully operational on the 1st of October, 1975. The next day, the House Appropriations Committee, frightened by the cost of the program and questioning its effectiveness in the face of Soviet MIRV technology, voted to pull funding for the base. The Senate concurred 48 days later, and the base was officially shut down on February 10th, 1976. We decided to visit this base in August of 2011. It's a surreal experience to come around the bend and find this alien looking place in the middle of the prairie. We were surprised to find the gate standing wide open and a flag flying over one of the buildings. There was a white truck parked inside and a light was on in one of the shops. So we decided to go inside and see if we could find someone to talk to and get permission to shoot some photos. To our disappointment, we weren't able to find anyone around. But since we were there, we decided to shoot the photos. This place is sometimes referred to as Nixon's Pyramid.
It's not hard to imagine a Hollywood movie in a setting like this, or perhaps an episode of The X-Files or The Walking Dead. After about 45 minutes shooting photos, we saw a black pickup speeding up the road outside the fence. I was standing right about here shooting a photo when the truck came around the corner and stopped just inches from me. The man in the truck was angry and told us we were trespassing. We apologized and he told us to finish shooting our photos and leave. We quickly wrapped up and as we left, we discovered there was one no trespassing sign on the gate, but because the gate was open, it was partially obscured by a fence post. Apologies to the property owner. In recent years, this base was purchased by a local Hutterite farming operation which now farms the land. The last we heard, a local historical society was interested in acquiring the structures for potential future use as a historical attraction. Until that day, the Stanley Mickelson Safeguard Complex will stand only as a relic of a time when we all lived under the threat of a nuclear doomsday. Thank you.